happy to have you here today. We are here with Dallas Macon of Divine Order. It is so nice to meet you. Thank you for joining us today on the Pro Organizer Studio podcast. <laughs> Thank you for having me. So I'm happy to be here. Yeah, we are thrilled to have you. So I would love for you to start out and just tell us a little bit. We'd love to hear from people about how they got involved in the organizing industry. So I'll say my journey started maybe about in 2005, really. Okay. In terms of organizing, I first did the class with NAPO. Back then, it was just a teleconference call, and okay. it was called Introduction to Professional Organizing. And I had heard about professional organizing by someone. Oh, I, at that time, I had read a Julie Morgenstern book, Organizing from the Inside Out. And that's how I kind of learned that it, it was an industry. It's and a I, job. <laughs> it's a job. And I looked it up and I took a course, but I, I still work full time. And I was working full time then. My boys were young. And I just, it became a little intimidating to me once I learned about all that it entailed in terms of managing the business of itself. So I kind of put it on hold. But like men, the story of many other organizers, um, I organized for family and friends for the last 15 years. Right. Um, they would always come to me, especially with closets, because I love colors and I love fashion. I always liked fashion. And I finally decided to make it a, a, a viable business because as I near retirement of my full-time career, I hope to be done in the next two or three years. Okay. Um, I thought, what would be the one thing that you would like to do that you actually enjoy? and came right back to organizing. So. Yeah, well, and so many people come at it from that. I do it for friends and family, and they I'm the person that they come to, so why shouldn't I do this for other people? So it's fun that, so how did you overcome your fear? We talk about fear a lot with people in our group. Like, how did you overcome that fear about, I can't start my own business? So some people that follow me on Instagram know I'm a breast cancer survivor. Okay. I went to breast cancer treatment seven years ago. And I think that is your aha moment. You know, sure. when you feel like, okay, or you see your life kind of flash before you. You start looking at life differently. I'm 50 plus, you know, you start looking at what are the things I haven't accomplished in life or that I think <laughs> I would like to do. And I kept on coming back to doing a business of some sort. And I went back and forth within something with fashion, but I'm at the stage in life where as much as I like fashion and I still like to be fashionable, it's not the same as when you were in your twenties and your thirties, where you were so preoccupied with the trends and sure. wanted to have all the trends. So I thought, you know what, organizing still, I can do organizing, I can do closets and I can still infuse some fashion there. Right. Um, so organizing seemed more viable. And also I think with organizing, you're helping others. It was a way yeah. to get back and to help others. I often get the question when people ask who wants to go clean up somebody else's mess. Yeah. But it's beyond that, you're helping them create a lifestyle and you're, and you're freeing them. You know? Absolutely. So that was it. So I just, I have this motto where I say, do it afraid, but just do it. So oh, I, I love that. I, I did it afraid. I'm not going to lie. I was very afraid. I didn't have an Instagram account. I was barely on Facebook. I yeah. didn't have an, a website. I didn't have all the standard things that they say you should do, but I felt if I prolonged to get everything just right, I would have talked myself out of it. I so, love that, do it afraid. <laughs> I literally just sent in the name. I had the name 10 years ago okay. and, I, and I applied and it's, they still had the name available. And I say, yay. And it came in in December, which I say is the worst month to really launch your business because you're paying taxes for the whole year anyway. Sure. <laughs> um, that's how much I didn't know. But I launched on December 26 of 2018. Okay. I, I became official, but it's because I just did it. And that's when it came in and I said, I'm going to do, do this. 
I love that phrase, do it afraid, because I do think that there are organizers and probably other entrepreneurs, but especially because organizers tend to be very organized people and they want everything in order. And so everything has to be set before you start, but there is absolutely something to be said for just starting and seeing where it goes. And figuring it out. Yes. And figuring it out. Yes. So, and obviously you figured it out. So you have a successful thriving business and like you said, you get to help people all the time. So what kind of community do you serve? So for me, I think it's probably the 35 to and above. I tend to have, I I, I use older lightly, but you know, more mature community, a woman that are, are established in many instances. And I think women who are similar to me that you've reached a point in your life where you're comfortable where you're at yeah. and you're basically trying to maintain but still accomplish a few things, whether it be to start a new business, whether it be to travel. Um, and this is an opportunity for you to just simplify your life. At this stage of life, we've accumulated so much because of the years of just getting and buying. So I had a revelation finally that I was looking at the minimalist thing and I always said I would never be a minimalist because I love clothes too much to give give up all the stuff, right? But what I learned is that I could curate my closet to have things only keep what I absolutely love and use quality over quantity, right? Absolutely. Uh, that is basically my, most of the women that come to me are, are those women who are seeking quant- quality over quantity and are looking for a simplified way of living. Yeah. I, the quality over quantity thing, that's something that I had in my own organizing journey too, because I realized that I bought so many of the $20 things chasing the $80 thing that I ended up spending more money than I would have yeah. if I would if have just, the, the $80 yeah, or if life. I had, yeah. And I would have bought a higher quality item that would have lasted me. And it was like this total light bulb moment for me. So I do think that there's a certain time in our lives that you do reach that point of, saying I want something that's quality and that's going to last. Yes. Most of my clients have been ladies who have come to that, that okay. understanding that, you know, I'm, I'm good with where I'm at. I'm going into this next phase and I want to do it in a, in a stylish, classy way, but sure. without a whole lot of stuff in a more simplified manner. And uh, so tell me a little bit, are closets your favorite thing to work on, I assume? Yeah, absolutely. So for me, again, I mentioned earlier, I do a lot of closets, but my focus, what I offer, what I think I offer differently, I'm big on color. I am big on color and color analysis. Finding colors that work for you. Seasonal color is big and it's okay to go outside of those colors but everyone have some standard colors that works well for them. And I think it's important to identify that. So outside of just doing the closets, I spend the time with my clients trying to figure out some colors for them and ways that they can use what they keep in a different way. And I call that shop your closet. I love one of the other features that I now offer yeah. Um, is shop your closet because again we're saying we took the time to invest and buy all these things and you don't want to keep investing in multiple things so for me I have found that you can take one item and make it look totally different based on the accessories okay so I am big on accessories and your accessories are fabulous again <laughs> you guys are see. she has Thank the you. most fabulous accessories <laughs> So that, that is the thing for me is to pushing the envelope a little, taking them out of their comfort zone just a little bit and showing them different ways to wear what they have with just a few key pieces or key accessories. That's, that's where I'm going now. 
I love that. So for people that might be listening and saying, oh, I've never really thought about offering my clients additional services, you know, kind of above and beyond the organizing realm. So can you tell us a little bit about how you help people? I know some of it is probably just your expertise, but how do you help people find the right colors for them when they're so, in their own closet? Yeah. So one of the things I always start by asking them is what is your favorite color? And most people have a favorite color for whatever reason. Also, I always ask, what are some of the, what are some of the clothing or colors that you can recall you, that you get complimented on? There's okay. usually that, oh, every time I wear that royal blue dress, everybody tells me that's a nice color. You can always think back to that one item yep. that you receive multiple compliments are. So that then start giving you an idea of where you fall. So in a seasonal, if you tend to wear a big, big leading factor is the jewelry. If you tend to wear silver or feel you look better in silver, then you gravitate more or look better with cool colors. Okay. But the goal is the warmer colors. And the two warm seasons are fall and um, spring. Okay. The two cool seasons are summer and winter with winter being the deeper and then the summer the lighter version so in, in a winter may have a purple and a, a summer may have a lavender okay so that kind of narrows it so i start with that but one of the tests that they can take is just simply using a taking a gold or silver scarf and placing it close to their face okay and you can always tell it's not that you can't use both but there's generally one that when you place it up to your face, it's going to look much better. Okay. That, that right there will narrow your selection. So well, that, one of the things that you and I were talking about before we started was when you're working with a client and you can look at their face, if they're you know looking at something in their closet or if they're trying it on and you can just tell immediately how they feel in it too. So feeling uh -huh. comfortable in that wardrobe is so important for your clients. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And that is why even though some um, clients, when I'm working with them, I, I make them try on the outfit or yep. try on the top. If they're not sure, Rather than just saying, just put it in a pile, I have them try it on and I tell them what I feel may, is working for them or what is not. Now, I have never received any formal training, but my mom was a seamstress. Oh, so okay. I always grew up around fashion and clothing and lines. So I kind of know that thing. It's ingrained, right? Yeah. And then my dad was an artist. So the color infusion... And that's why I kind of, it, it became second nature for me. Well, but I think that for the people that are listening that it may not be, you know, fashion may not be their area of expertise. I think the important thing is thinking about, hey, what might I have that's value added for my clients beyond just organizing? Maybe you're really great in a kitchen and so you could recommend some new kitchen things to someone or maybe you're really good at arranging furniture or whatever. It's just thinking about some of those above and beyond things that you can offer to clients and being flexible. So knowing who your ideal client is and knowing what services you're good at providing and not providing too many, but being able to provide like some flexibility for yeah. you're exactly right helps you. So this year obviously has been a very uh, monumentally challenging year. <laughs> um, I mean, COVID definitely has, has been a huge thing to deal with, but obviously one of the biggest things that we've had to deal with, especially in the United States, is the uh, George Floyd tragedy, in which I live in Minneapolis. So unfortunately that happened in my backyard and that caused obviously a huge amount of news this year. And it's been something that I think it started an extremely important conversation that will need to stretch long beyond 2020. But one of the things that we wanted to talk to you about is an initiative that you have called Black Girls Who Organize. And we want to talk to you about representation within the organizing industry and your effort and also how we can help with that effort. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so Black Girls Who Organize came about a little before Black Lives Matter, I think yeah. it, it made people more aware. The timing yep. was just perfect. 
But Black Girls Who Organized came about because as I told you, I took the first class with NAPO 15 years ago. Yep. And I always, um, I would look for magazines, anything dealing with organizing. There are certain magazines that in January every year, they did the, during the National Organizing Month for years, I have purchased Better Homes and Gardens and Good Housekeeping and all those magazines, right? And fast forward to now, 14, 15 years later, I'm opening these magazines and I'm still not seeing a very fair representation. And there weren't a lot of women of color that were, or minorities that were represented. Mm -hmm. I actually um, recently wrote to a magazine because they did a, they did a publication, say in October, they reissued it in January, and then they reissued it by popular demand in March. Beautiful magazine, great tips. I love a lot of the organizers out there. I follow them, but out of all the contributors, they had 15 organizers, not one woman of color or minority. Yeah. That's got to change because we're out here. I know if I'm out here, there are others out here. Absolutely. So what I did is because I live in the Washington DC metro area and I know there were a lot of other black women, professional women in here, I set out to try to meet a few mm -hmm. that I could just meet with, interact with them, learn from their experiences, organizing with me coming into it new. And I was amazed. We, we met one day for dinner and with the four or five of us speaking, I came away with so much knowledge in an hour and a half that I had learned in the whole year that I had been in yeah. here. And I thought other women need to hear this and other women need to know that they have a resource. I know NAPO exists and I think it's wonderful, but sometimes the cost is, is an issue. Everyone sure. can't can accept it or um, afford it or the location. So sure. for varying reason. So I decided that I wanted to feature these ladies because they were so awesome. Yep. And I thought, okay, I will just feature them on my page once a month. At the time I was, I, I, I and I still do follow a, a young lady who has a page called Black Girls Who Blog. Okay. And she posts this almost every day, which I know I'm not going to do, but I thought, wow, why don't I do Black Girls Who Organize? So I set out to do that and the response has been so overwhelming. To date, I have over 80 something ladies lined up to feature on this. So I've gone from once a week to twice a week. I so love that. it was never meant to be, to cause division. It yeah. was never meant for us to not continue. It, it is my hope that it opens the door for us, like you say, to, to begin. So I think it's a great resource if you're looking for some woman of color and you're looking for some minority, it's a page that you can go to and yep. you have a resource. I feature these ladies. It talks about their location, their favorite space to organize, some of the things they're involved in. And again, thankfully too, because of Black Lives Matter, I think it just catapulted awareness to have other women um, included. But that is also good to know. But mine is not a formal organization. It is just simply that a platform where I could feature and highlight other women of color that are doing some wonderful things. Yeah. Well, and I think obviously, like we said, this is not going to be a conversation just for 2020. We have realized that this is a conversation that we need to have and things are going to need to change over the next who knows how many years. <laughs> but what are the kind of things that you feel like people can do as um, allies of this movement and how can we do a better job featuring women of color in the organizing industry or even outside? What are some of those things that you would help us with? Well, thing one, I think it's already started the fact that you're interviewing me. I think those are the things that it's just the little things, reaching out and having some featuring some of them on podcasts, on shows. Yep. I'm starting to see an increase. There have been several conferences. I know like that, that were recently done where they have a number of Black professional and other minorities as guest speakers, right? So right. those are the main things. I think giving them FaceTime mm -hmm. and not doing it just because we need to check a box. 
Sure. But doing it because we really want to form relationships. I have met wonderful organizers that are not women of color, that we have collaborated on projects. We have said, let's do this workshop together on Zoom. Let's talk about things that we have in common because we all have some commonality. Absolutely. So I, I think that's the main thing. If they can be involved with media and just giving an opportunity to showcase their talents is a wonderful thing. Yeah. Well, I think that it's important for all of us to, to recognize uh, that we all have a role in making it better and different. And I think having the conversation and being able to have the conversation, I think, is a super important thing for all of us. And recognizing that we need to overcome and really think about that diversity. And I, so I came from, my background is in corporate America. And so it's funny when I started in the organizing industry, I mostly worked in all male industries. <laughs> and so I would walk in the room in many times, in many cases, and be the only woman that was there, or maybe one of two or three women that were there. And so when I came to the organizing industry, I'm like, oh, cool. And it's, it's all women. And so I felt excited by that, right? Because that was a different representation than I was used to in my life. But we also have to realize that it's about representation at many different levels. And yeah. that includes, you know, when I think about we've got people in the organizing industry that are bilingual, we've got people servicing many different kinds of, of communities and, and being inclusive about about all those organizations is important. A absolutely. And you know, I'm bilingual because I'm I was born and raised in Panama. Right. So I speak Spanish fluently as well. So that is another thing. I've made it a point, even though the, the name is black professional organizers, but again, um, I've met a few Filipinos and a few mm -hmm. Hispanic um, that I also will be featuring there because again, it's just given an opportunity to, to, to open a door for other minorities, period. Well, we love the work that you're doing. And is there anything that you have on the horizon that you're excited about? Anything that you, I mean, other than just kind of getting through 2020, what, what does 2021 <laughs> yeah, look like I for you? <laughs> Uh, I I really just um, I I just know that I'm in a good place right now. Um, I think I have finally figured out. You know, when you start the business, you're trying to look and see what everyone is doing, and you're trying to do what everybody is doing to a certain extent. And trying, I have finally figured out it, it's it was too much. It became overwhelming. So for me, I'm going to stick with the closets, with the color, a few kitchen pantries. I do well with home offices because I've teleworked from home for the last four years. So okay, no norm has been my norm. Sure. Um, so I think I have a really good handle on that. Um, but just, again, forming communities, building communities, building relationships. And my goal is to do more workshops. Okay. Um, where I'm able to one, bridge the gap, do collaborative um, efforts. But yeah, I am looking more than just going in and organize a home. I still value that and still love that. But I think everyone has to have something that they can do virtually as well. For sure. If we just don't know how things are going to be. So to keep things going and not be at a stale stalemate point you know yeah. I, it's important that we do that so th that would be the goal for me just to continue helping and assisting others being a resource to many and just bridging the gap wherever i can i love it so something that you said is something that we talk about which is a phrase that i love comparison is the thief of joy <laughs> and so like you said when you were constantly comparing yourself to other organizers or looking around sometimes you just have to look inward and say what am i good at and uh, i am not going to be able to help clients make their closets more colorful that is something that you are expert at it may not be something i'm expert at but just being able to know what you are good at and the people you serve i think is awesome. So. I say something very similar. I say comparison breeds discontentment. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's good. Yeah. Too. It's true. <laughs> yeah. It breeds discontentment because usually as soon as you start looking at what they have or what they're doing and you're not doing, then that's when you start being not content with what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. I 
Love that. Yeah. Well, we have appreciated having you on the podcast today. And where can people find you on the great internet? So for Divine Order 4 and number 4 you. Um, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and that's also my website, divineorderforyou.com. Um, and I, I'm mostly on Instagram. I don't know, somehow, even though my age group probably says differently in terms of the demographics that most will be on Facebook. Um, I just like the format on Instagram. It's quick, it's easy, and it's yep. done. And so I, most of my posts and most, most of my um, data occurs either on, on Instagram and on my website. So divine okay. order for you. Wonderful. And we will link um, to all of your uh, handles, including Black Girls Who Organize. Black Girls Who Organize is, is the other handle. Yeah, yeah, we really want people to be able to go and follow and see what you're doing there because you're doing just great work. So it was lovely meeting you and thank, thank you for bringing you. some color and excitement to our day. <laughs> thank you for having me. I greatly appreciate this. I don't take it lightly. <laughs>